All right, guys, we are back for match number two between UCF and a Greek economy. Greek, a Greek economy managed to take a game number one. Uh, so they are well, uh, well prepared to get themselves the domination victory here. Uh, so UCF can only hope for one point out of this match, while a Greek economy can walk away with uh, two additional points which is uh, pretty nice. So UCF is now first pick as this was the choice of a Greek economy, Polskaya Foundry. So they're opting for the garage ban once again, and they do have first pick, so they could opt to take him instead. This means that they can take Phoenix, once again, if they so choose, uh, they could also take Mayev. Uh, they can opt for Stukov or Malfurion. Jaxter did play a really nice Stukov, and uh, they're going to take him right off the table. A Greek economy showing a little bit of respect there to the side of UCF with how well Jaxter played that Stukov. And if you're watching the chat at all, even Jaxter is a little bit sad about that. As I'm guessing, uh, it's one of his favorite heroes, or at least he plays it really well. They're, they're opting for the Phoenix again. I almost wouldn't be surprised if they opt for the same things. Uh, so a Greek economy says, we're going to go and play exactly the same thing. You want to have the Phoenix? We're going to have the blow up on the Phoenix between Genji and the Hanzo. And... If you're if you're UCF right now, you need to think of another strategy to deal with the two of them and deal with the dive and potential um and potential for them to just completely wreck you with the CC train between Blazed CC, Johanna CC, Hanzo's CC. Uh, I mean that there was a lot of CC, and then even Uther can get on in there and drop his hammer. So if you're facing a team like that again, now Furion could be a good alternative here. You pop out the Twilight Dream, you cause Genji to get blown away if he dives on in, but Cookie was playing a mean Genji there, and I wouldn't be surprised if Cookie specifically looks to not go in with his E, or if he is, he's going to bait it out every time the Twilight Dream by Eing in and then X striking as soon as he can. So that way, when Malph is winding up for the Twilight Dream, he's already out of the fight and immune, and Malfurion blows it on nothing. That's what I'm expecting happen after watching uh, Cookie's play on Genji last game. So ETC once again being picked up. The, the Uther ban coming on out, they're not going to give them any any invulns here. And for good reason, they also don't want to, if they do opt for the mosh pit, they want one less way to get them out of the mosh pit. So this is really unwinding, pretty much like the same as last game. Aside from the Uther, they've opted for Johanna once again. Uh, they have Hanzo and they have the Genji. The only thing different so far for a Greek economy is that they won't have Uther. They could pick up Alex Straza, which I feel is a very strong pick, especially on Volskaya, because you're fighting over a, a point. And you push him off the point, you gain control of it, and you sit on that point, and then, well, you don't want to fight into Alexstrasza while she's in dragon form. So they've opted for Blaze as well. So seriously, the only difference from a Greek economy will be their support pick. Now, on the other side, we so far only have a support difference as well. They could still opt for uh, pretty much the same thing, although Gray Man was... Uh, Greymane with his uh, a band out there, and I'm not sure how effective he was overall. He did pop the DPS for the side of of UCF, but I feel like 
it wasn't the pick overall uh, because he had to be played as ranged for pretty much the entirety of there of that which is why you had the cursed bullet you have the quicksilver bullets for the extra range you're not really getting a worgen out of the out of the gray main and i feel like if you're not getting a worgen or you're you're basically getting half of a hero or well not fully half of a hero but a hero that isn't quite as good so they're opting for the sonia and the kelthos here uh what's interesting is that kelthos does have that barrier he can pop and it's not a bad choice because he has also cc available to him and finally the sonia who does great in the solo lane now brightwing is the pickup which is definitely odd um i don't really see the need for the brightwing it's another potential interrupt for a mosh as is uh it a way to disengage the situation between Sonya and ETC having on in there. They will have the global and they could get themselves the Genji shielded, which will let Genji go, you know, really hard into the fights. So the Brightwing isn't bad. It's just a little bit odd in comparison, in my opinion, to someone like Alex Straza. Uh, in general, to me, a stronger healer. So based on what we saw last time, the coordination out of the Greek economy, I'm feeling really good about what they have right now. So let's reintroduce both teams here. So we got for a Greek economy, Bishop Miss once again on that blaze, Olive Farmer once again on the Johanna, Decade this time on the Brightwing, Cookie once again on the Ganji, and Oscar once again on the Hanzo. That is a Greek economy. And on the side of UCF Death Knights, we got Jaxter37 on Malfurion. We have Ash Bash on that Kel'thas. Rook once again on the ETC. Snipe once again on the Phoenix. And Kodiax on that Sonya. So we got the footsie fight happening mid. And uh, they will get outpoked here to begin with. Just because of the extra range Hanzo has with his arrows. Not really too big of a deal. Um, one thing is they have really good wave clear on the side of UCF. They have Blaze Hold do fine. Um, they have actually deferred on who solo lanes where where they're going. Uh, Blaze is in top. Sonia is in the bot lane, and so right now they have no one dealing with bottom. Um, Sonia is actually scared, not sure where where they are, and so has backed off. In the meantime, they are. Not really losing too much XP in the bot lane, but they are slowly going to. So Blaze finally making his way down. And in the mid lane, we have the action happening still. So looking at the talents, we got the Nature Swiftness. We got Warping coming out. We have the Prog Rock. Once again, Advanced Targeting and the Mana Addict. So remember, friends, don't pick Convection. Pick Mana Addict against a comp like this. A Snipe. Oh, Ash Bash. He's really far out there. Rook trying to slide on in to stop the further engagement. Not really going to get anything there. They do get some good pressure on the side of a Greek economy. And there goes a wild Genji just ink on out of there. We got Swift's win. Neural Stim pack this game. Uh, we also have Pixie Charm coming on out. We got the Simple Geometry and Laws of Hope. Olive Farmer going really deep into there. Has four members looking to take him out. There's the root. Olive Farmer is still going to make it out, though. Just fine and dandy. He was chunked a little bit. Cookie's taking a bit hook as well, but not too big a deal. We also have uh, the Simple Geometry and Laws of Hope, like I was saying. So, we have... Nothing too special happening here. We do have a lot of harass from the side of a Greek economy. 
it's not too big a deal. There's a big slide from Rook coming on out. I'm not sure if that's the slide to make, but Cookie was in a little bit of an opposition such that he was actually getting poked down. A nice stun from Ash Bash. Not going to be able to secure any kills there. Just poking down Decade. And let's check those advanced targeting stacks. We got ourselves a 13, 6, 7. So they're working on, on it. Shuriken Master coming on out again. We have Decade actually going down bot. Um, he's going to go and pick up the camp. Just bribe it real fast. Uh, I would have honestly just held it for the top camp at that point because they could have taken that really fast. Uh, you also, a lot of people tend to uh, get too antsy with a midpoint, unlike uh, some other objectives. You don't need to be a nice done slide combo and say goodbye to Decade. Yeah, at least he won't be dead for a decade right now. Olive Farmer, though, going to be getting just out. The war from Snipe, he's looking for it. He just misses it. 40 HP and Olive Farmer walks on out. I mean... That's as close as you get in Heroes of the Storm. So what I was saying was, you don't need to pick this up with the bribe, in my opinion. It would have been better to take the Siege Camp top. Oscar getting chunked down there, having to back out in the meantime. It would have been better to take that Siege Camp with the bribe, get the pressure in the top lane, and then come back here as five with that pressure, force him to go top. Ooh, Blaze just getting knocked away before he can go in. There he goes once again, though. And there is the fire of a blaze. A three-man slide coming on out. Decade is running for his life, but has nowhere to go. They're not turning on him, UCF. They actually let him escape. Rook is next on the menu for a Greek economy. If they can reach him, and they cannot. Bishop, Bishop on the treadmill. Treadmill of death. Oh my god. Both teams getting super low. The focus is not quite on point for either team, I'd say. As there is... If health pools are getting that low across everyone, uh, generally you're not getting enough focus from members of your team. But UCF does pick up the first protector. First protector really is important because it starts to get you in a major advantage for the next protector. Really, that's what it comes down to. The first protector is is not strong enough to like take a fort usually but it's strong enough to take down front walls and when you get down all those walls you get yourself you know xp lead and you get pressure for the next protector where you can easily take a fort and sonya has been doing a lot of work bot lane so you can see taking down this tower pretty low uh in the top lane we have one tower down they don't have too much time left in there but they should have been able to stay there honestly and get that tower down i feel like but they're going to play it really safe here they're actually i'm not quite sure why they're coming back in though oh uh, there's the rue there is and the phoenix they do chunk cookie down but it's not going to be enough if they were willing to come back in they should have taken that tower at least to me so that leaves everyone back to pretty even uh, there is a slight xp lead about half a level on the side of ucf so this is prepping them nicely to get that 10 advantage which they hopefully can try to abuse you want that window as lar large as possible um, if it's very small you don't have much of a opportunity to try and get yourself an even bigger lead so taking a look at some of the talents we have the deep roots we have the wild growth we got the nature swiftness the poison spear the battle rage on the other side we have the dodge once again we have Sh shuriken mastery almost done uh, we have the Unstable anonymal, not Anomaly, the Cleanse. We have Simple Geometry build coming out once again, full full arrows. Uh, we got Bless and Momentum Conviction once again. Uh, let's see, Loudspeakers. We have the Echo Pedal this time. I don't believe we had it last time. I might be wrong. Uh, emergency Protocol, Combat Advantage, finally Another Win, and Burned Flesh. So they're both stacking up pretty nicely. And uh, they should be done with it pretty soon. Might be able to even get it for the next objective if they can get both waves on the side of UCF. That's, that's going to be big to get the prog rock and get the mana addict. Ash Bash really far out there, sticking his neck out, about to get uh, the guillotine from that. But 
and you're not able to recognize that a greek economy which is okay they, they hit tens they're safe nothing nothing happened from ucf with their 10 advantage which is fine um there wasn't really much opportunity there to do so and in the bot lane sonia is once again you know pushing this in winning so she can rotate in and fight with the team as a five man kind of go in poke come back out and go back down to the bot lane but they're not really taking advantage of that for the most part they are going to go onto this siege camp which will be pushing in the top lane um which isn't as good as during the first objective because of the fact that you're able to respond to that much more easily i mean you're going to have to rotate here as you can see 25 seconds you have to rotate here so if you pick up the siege camp at this point the enemy team is going to be right there and yeah it's going to take them time and they have to deal with it but they're going to deal with it in a much more efficient manner cookie is way out there no slide oh, there's the slide we got the root we got the follow-up stun there comes all the dps from phoenix and it's not going to be enough to secure a kill the bunker comes out and both olive farmer and bishop mist will walk away fine and dandy cookie on the other hand did take a lot of damage but it was not enough to actually you know secure a kill there Osh should still be available we also have the leap which I failed to notice. So they're looking to just blow up the back line between a leap and a mosh combo. Uh, they do still have to be cognizant of all the interrupts. So getting the mosh is going to be very hard here still. There's the root onto Hanzo. Hanzo is going to be uh, getting out of that. No, no real uh, follow up on that route, unfortunately. They have cleared this up. Because that's another thing. They want to keep the pressure on the lane so they keep vision as well. So they can't just walk away real easily. Shuriken Mastery is done now. Olive Farmer is on to... There's the Mosh coming out. Two men. Uh, and it's still up. It's still up. The Mosh has gotten them the kill that they so desperately need. And Sonya is going to be going down here. There's the Extract. There is two kills. They may have gotten themselves a kill really early. Snipe getting caught in there. And they are looking for the, another kill. The Warp coming out just in time. But we got Hanzo, Snipe Master of Heroes of the Storm, just picking himself off another member of UCF. So that Mosh came in, got themselves a kill, but it really didn't matter. They blew the heroics on, on the support, and all the DPS were alive. They, they then had no way to deal with all the members of a Greek economy. I mean, what are you going to do if you have no Mosh available and you've gone into a fight and burnt all your heroics to try and kill only a single member of the enemy team you basically are going to lose that fight still because you have no tools available that's why you can win often fights that are 4v5 if you have your heroics and the enemy team doesn't think about it as like a 10 versus 9 advantage essentially that's what's happening here it's a 10 versus 9 advantage there's the blessed chill coming in again a nice stun there's the bunker drop zoning out rook he will slide on through though and the bunker will be going down the roots have been dropped but it will not be enough as a greek economy has picked up a protector same story as last game tens roll around and ucf has no way to deal with them they just burn through the health pools of ucf so unfortunately they didn't get the early game prep like ucf did but that means ucf is going to be able to defend this a little bit better so protector gets themselves a fort they're now able to march on down to the mid what they should be doing uh, much like i mentioned before is prep the next objective as it keeps getting stronger and stronger you get more and more value and you open yourself up with the potential to getting a keep so they get this front wall they should march on down to the bot lane uh it looks like they're still gonna fight this out rook is getting really low there's the arrow coming on out but there will not be enough follow-up from a greek economy as well, no one else to dive in. Uh, you have Olivia, or sorry, Olivia, Olive, Farmer in there as Johanna. There's the bunker coming on now. Um, I'm not sure this is the best bunker, but oh, there's the extra. Like, they get themselves a two kills, three kills uh, coming on up very shortly. There is the ice block, but it's not going to be for much as Jaxter will be going down next. Snipe is going to be going down. Cookie picking him off, slicing on through him, and 
good sir, you deserve a cookie, as you have now gotten your team an additional kill there. This is where they go pick up the turrets, pick up all that XP, get 16, get themselves a support camp. They could even be so bold as to go and walk over and take the other siege camp, which I would do. You have a 16 versus 14 advantage with very low cooldown heroics in general. The only thing you need to be cognizant of is ETC Mosh in tight space. So they see the Blaze. Unfortunately, Blaze is not coming on up. So this buys you see have the opportunity to actually take this despite being down the talent here uh, it's still too risky for a greek economy to come on in so they are now have however getting bishop prepping the spot lane without even needing that protector in the meantime however uh we have uh, some big time dive in a nice blessed chill coming on in there's the extract follow-up but it's not going to land on anyone it won't matter as they still secure themselves two kills in the meantime busy talking about prepping lanes and who needs to prep a lane when you're prepping yourself with kills uh, uh fortunately olive farmer is in no man's land right now there's a stun there's the follow-up and they are looking to take him down but it's not going to be good cookie tearing through rook's hp there's the protected and there's the lock on it's not going to be enough to take out cookie and rook will be able to get out as will sonia and so they managed to walk away from that olive looking a little bit in a bad position however they managed to chunk through the wall quickly enough to have the rest of the members come on in for a greek economy so they still have this siege camp pushing on up here. They're getting some good value out of that. Uh, they do need to get 16 ASAP. They need one person to soak the mid lane optimally because they can't fight this unless they can really heavily chunk down the Greek economy. The mid lane has been pushed out heavily. Top lane is getting that fort chunked on down and so they can soak here relatively safely they can't really soak anywhere else unfortunately because that siege camp has pushed all the way out and at this point they're not going to be able to get that fort uh, they do have another wave coming but it's not going to be quite enough and they have turret let's see do they have the other turrets still available they do not um, no turrets available no healing pack available but or sorry they do have one turret available not not both turrets that they had earlier so picking up the abilities in the meantime, talents that were picked up, we had no escape picked up. Um, not your usual choice out of Sonya's. Uh, we had the ice block, we have the mic check once again, auxiliary shields, and pyromaniac. So there's the nerves that's still coming on out. 16 has been hit, nature's balance. We got aggressive shredding. No 16 picked up yet for Phoenix. On the other side, we had the critter eyes. So basically, your 25% extra damage there. Nice zoning from Blaze with the slow. Uh, there's the X strike. Uh, um, there's a lot of back and forth right now. There's the stun onto Sonya. There's the X strike coming on out now. And there they go, piling up the damage, chunking on down. Rook is next up as he's been chunked heavily down. Greek economy, however, is a little bit split right now. The split doesn't matter because they have converged on Kel'Thas. They are still chasing, but at this point, they can go back, get themselves a protector, and get themselves a keep, uh, or potentially a keep. Now, they're going to go and get themselves as much soak as possible in the meantime to get to 20. They got Oscar there. Uh, they have Decade, who's full-backed in the top lane. There's another way for him to soak up, which is... Uh, are going to be a good chunk of xp you can see they're almost done there there they go i'm not sure where oscar is going he should be going top to get that okay he's finally decided to do so he should have play of the game if they get there in time unfortunately he took too long to decide to go there he might be able to get it off this wave if he just works his way down um okay he's working on getting it this tower should basically get him to 20 there they go 20 is finally hit and now they are able to go and fight 20 versus 16. This is really brutal for UCF right now. A Greek economy is going to just get, they just got themselves almost a free kill on the side of uh, a Greek economy. There's an arrow, a wild arrow has appeared, and Jaxter has gone down from the gunner of that protector. At this point, I'm pretty certain this is game over as 
we have <laughs> protector going for another one it's like tag me in baby i got this and there's the extra the arcane barrier will not be good enough four members down greek economy just absolutely blasting through this match 15 kills to two with only one change in their draft and that is with decade i think at this point they honestly could have picked anyone for their draft and it wouldn't have mattered because i mean we saw them win 4v5 without decade very nice job on the side of a greek economy and they walk away with that domination and i gotta hand it to them they are definitely looking solid i mean genji 84k hanzo 63k genji just went off this match in comparison to the last uh kelthos 47 phoenix 36.5k like i mean we're seeing double dps numbers come out on the side of a greek economy based in both games they have someone topping with basically twice the dps uh, which is pretty insane especially when their comp relied on johanna for most of the wave clear honestly uh they they had blaze for solo and pretty much then just johanna for the rest of the soak or uh clear so the greek economy coming out with a, a draft that just very well executed cc after cc after cc just annihilating ucf as there's no way for them to contend with it all get out their squishy heroes and then dump the damage back into them without going down first so congratulations once again to a greek economy it has it crashed pre-10 and then it recovered each game once they hit 10 uh, just because they had so many tools at their disposal so i have another match about to occur it is going to be between let's see it is between dank team and dg prime so hold on tight while i get that match set up and stick around uh because to be another good one 